Welcome to this video about reusing Razor components. Razor components are the building blocks of Blazor application. It doesn't uh, make a difference if you use Blazor WebAssembly or Blazor Server. In both cases, we build our uh, applications by stacking uh, Razor components uh, to each other. So, first I will create here a new project. This project will be a Razor class library, which will act like as a container for the components. I call it components container. Now, if I create one, we will have a default uh, component in here, also a default uh, class, which, uh, we, which we can use to, to call JavaScript. Uh, we don't need them, but we can just leave it at that. Now, I want to have the fetch data razor component and the counter component uh, in this container so I, that we can reuse them. Copy them in here. Now, the thing is, fetch data relies on the weather forecast and weather forecast service. So. These two have to go in, in this container. Now, because the namespace uh, yeah, hasn't changed, I have to change namespace to components container, do the same thing for the weather forecast service. Now, uh, this should work, but of course, here uh, in the startup, it doesn't uh, recognize the weather forecast service, so we have to add a reference to this uh, project. Now, this uh, folder or this namespace doesn't exist, so I have to delete it. And then in here, I can just add the using um, directive for the components container. If you have a using uh, directive in this imports uh, razor file, it will be uh, it will be valid for all the components you have defined in this uh, project. So now the thing is, these two components uh, counter and fetch data have here a page directive. So Uh, in order for the, the Blazor application to make them uh, routable, we have to here define the, define like a new component which has the route and then display the, the component here in this component container. I'm quickly going to do this. Uh, Razor component, I call it counter route. We just have to counter. So, and I do the same thing for fetch data. So now our Blazor application should work as expected. And uh, yeah, of course, I have to call it fetch data route. OK, now this quickly should go away. Yeah, they, they will eventually if you run the project. Now I also want to create a new project, uh, which is a which is a server rendered web, web application. I call it a Razor app. Here, yes, with the uh, ASP Neco Razor pages. And here I will show you that we can also display Razor components from a Razor page. 
here I go to the index.cshtml page. So CSHTML is the file extension for the eraser pages. Now, here I call the component, um, yeah, the component thing. Now I give it a type, type of, here the type of the component I want to render. The counter, of course, it doesn't know about the counter. Uh, we have to add a, a reference here, a project reference to the components container. And in the view import CSHTML, we can just add the using to the components container. The view import uh, razor page uh, CSHTML is exactly the same thing uh, as the uh, as the imports .razor. Just imports .razor is a razor component, and this is a, a razor page. Uh, if we would leave it at that, it wouldn't uh, render because we have to give it the render modes. There are three possible render modes, but only two if we want to uh, see the, the component actually rendered. I can either go with server pre-rendered or I can go with static. Here I'm just going to display the fetch data component uh, using the static render mode. I'm not 100% sure why the server render mode doesn't work. I think it has to do something a bit with this kind of marker that, that comes with the server render mode and the marker is only available in, in Blazor applications. Uh, but I'm not, I don't know anymore, let, let's just say it. Now, you may ask yourself who, if we had a parameter in this counter component, can could we set it to? Yes, we could. Uh, therefore, I'm just going quickly to, to manipulate this here a bit. Uh, make this a parameter here. Uh, parameters always have to be public, and they have to have, of course, public getters and setters. Oh, no, only set. So let's now we want to give it the argument. I have to. Uh, say param and then the name of the property we want to set and now we can pass in the integer. So uh, let's just quickly set the startup project so that we see the Blazor application and the, uh, the Eraser uh, application working. And let's give it a go. Okay, it, it got a, a message, you can't have a, a value for the weather forecast because that's the thing that we have to expect or the dependency injection. So, in the weather forecast, oh, no, in the fetch data component. Oh, okay, yes, of course. Uh, here we have to register the, the weather forecast service. We do it with the lifetime singleton weather forecast service uh, yeah let's just retry it okay this works now uh, as expected uh, i just want to quickly point out the differences between a razor application uh, or a razor page and a razor component if i click this button what will happen uh, it will happen nothing because a razor page is rendered only on the server and it can't interact with uh, user input from the client so the only way a razor page can change if there are values on the server that are changing and we are making a new request uh, if i re make a refresh 90 will stay 90 here we will have new weather forecast because that's the randomized generation thing so yeah we see we have new weather forecasts uh, here when we go to the network tab and we make a new request 
we see that the, the whole uh, document uh, comes from the server. Uh, if you make a new request, that's, uh, that's not special. It's in every application like that. But if you now go to home, we see that uh, whenever we click the application, a new document comes from the server. And in Blazor, this is not the case. Now, uh, it works as expected here. We can click it, of course, because that's Blazor. Uh, now, network tab. When we first make a request, it will also come as a rendered document from the server, because, as you may uh, have guessed, the uh, host file, which is like the entry point for the application, is a Razor page, and, and therefore everything comes, comes uh, rendered on the server. But now, if I go to counter, here I don't get a new page. From now on, it behaves like a single page application so that the server doesn't have to render a new page. Only the differences are, are coming down over these uh, web sockets. So I go to fetch data. You see, we are not making a new request. But everything, all the new information is coming here over these web sockets connections. When I click it, boom, we see here that's the weather forecast that's getting a, a stream flag from the server. So uh, I hope I've shown you how we can use Razor components in a Razor page. And I hope that I have also shown you a bit the differences. And just to, to close this uh, video out, I want to show that when we have a Blazor application, and I've mentioned it before, we have here this host CSHTML file. This, that's a Razor page because of the file extension. And here we see the exact same thing. So in a Razor page, they uh, render the, the, yeah, the Razor components. And in this case, it's just the app component, which is like the, the heart of, of the Blazor application. So I hope you have enjoyed the, the video and thank you for your attention.